Welcome to another season of the Tiger Football Report. We're back to look at the Tigers of 2018 right now. For an athlete, there's nothing scarier than a torn ACL. Athletes trust us with their care and their careers because we're a recognized leader in sports medicine. Get back to your active life sooner with MedStar Sports Medicine. White Market's ice cream plant is based in Sunbury, Pennsylvania and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a, a product called Peanut Butter Indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl, and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. You come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packages of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years for Wise Markets and uh, I'm loving every minute of it. Welcome fans to what we hope will be the first of about 18 Tiger football reports for this season. I'm your host Spiro Marikas along with the head coach of the Tigers Rob Ambrose and coach hard to believe this is year number 10 for you. I guess so yeah I didn't really somebody said that uh, earlier in the year and I didn't give it much credit. It feels like 15 minutes and then it feels like a lifetime at the same time, so just happy to be home. All right, I know that uh, this time of the year, the week before first game, your players are dying to hit somebody that is not wearing black and gold. At what point during training camp do you start to get that sense of guys maybe getting a little itchy? Middle of last week. We had a scrimmage that we knew it was a, it was a tune-up scrimmage. It was situational. It was just stuff we had to cover so we could talk about it, put it on film, teach off of it. And they knew we were really weren't going to try to kill each other. It was just going to more educational than anything else. And it's we accidentally let some Morgan film kind of slip into what we were doing. And the minute that got in there, it took off like wildfire. They've pretty much been focused in since about last Thursday. All right. Last year the team finished five and six, but you finished very strong uh, at the end of the season winning three of your last four ball games, so optimism is high coming into this year. I know you've mentioned several times throughout training camp that you have guys that have played a lot, that have experience, and it's because so many injuries happened over the last couple of years that guys that you were not expecting to play ended up playing. Let's start on the defensive side of the football, and I know on paper it looks like your linebacking crew may be the strength of that defense. I, you got to think so. Uh, to, the no, sheer number of tackles between Tedder and Wallace is a large, large number. Uh, Keon Pei has been a stalwart at the same position, and I'm just kind of waiting for his total breakout season. He finally gets it. He knows the scheme like the back of his hand. But if I'm going to be honest and talking about camp, Robbie Hayward's had the best camp of any linebacker we got, and by a lot. And he's he doesn't weigh as much as DeAndre, and he might not be as fast as Chris, but when he hits you, you know it. And there's been great, great competition. Christian Dixon had a great camp. And last year, he wasn't even on the radar. So I'm saying a whole bunch of names, and there's only three spots for those guys out there. So it's, it's still, the competition's still stiff, and they're making each other better. Now, the linebackers, obviously a key to the defense, but their job becomes easier if the guys in front of them are doing their job. And your defensive line, you bring back some experience there, you've got some youth there too. Zane is back, and that's uh, that 
makes any head coach feel good. Your biggest, strongest guy, he's back. Uh, there's a guy named Charles Garrett that we brought in as junior college guy. He's had a really, really good camp. And anybody's ever coached football, and those that watch it in depth, especially at the college level, you find guys who their senior year play extreme. Like, where did this guy come from? And it, the light just turns on, and they get it. Nico Cook probably had the best camp up front. Uh, there's a guy named Ricky DeBerry that nobody from Oklahoma doesn't know. I think very the first well. player ever to come to Towson from Oklahoma. <laughs> And, uh, you know, the late time and Bryce Carter have just been getting better since January. So we're throwing a whole lot of names out of there. Uh, that, but that's got to help. I mean, it, oh, yeah. it, it, you, you can rotate guys in and out at the defensive line and at the linebacker We can play position. hard, we can play fast, and we can be fresh. How about the secondary? The secondary is, you know, Monty's been, I feel like Monty Fenner's played safety here for 18 years. And uh, he's starting to look like an old guy, too. Tippett comes back, but the whole back end got revamped in the offseason. Uh, we will probably have two guys starting a corner that have never played here, but both have collegiate experience. I mean, Schumann and Gillette, who've had tremendous camps. Both of these guys have worked really hard. Not only have they fit in with the scheme, but they fit in with the team. And I could say, you know, I could just stop right there, but the competition behind them has been fierce. Uh, Jerry Love's been here since January and has done a great job. McCants played last year because he had to, and he's had a good camp. Troy Vincent, who's been injured, he's been here for a little bit. He's had a good camp. So, again, we're, we'll be rotating guys in, and they'll be fresh. Staying on the defensive side, kind of, punt returns. Um, at practice, Shane Simpson's worked there at some point. You've had other guys there. When the season starts, who do you expect to be back there punt, returning punts? Very good question, Spiro. The, it, it is nice to have as many guys who can do that as we have. Like, you know, in the past, we've had a guy who was the guy, and really, the, you know, Sir Joseph was one of the best that was ever the guy. Uh, Shane did a great job when he's a freshman, didn't have a great year last year because of the injury, uh, but Rodney Dorsey steps up, Tippett returns the one for a touchdown against William & Mary. So that's still shaking out in the wash, and it's gonna be by situation. There's a lot of talent, and we gotta make sure we put the right guy with the ball in his hands. All right. Let's move over to the offense and talk about Shane Simpson. We'll, we'll hold off on the other question that you've been hit with 85 million times in the last month. Yes, I am 30 years old. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Shane last year, as you said, he was not Shane Simpson not last year. He looks to be Shane Simpson again this season. It is a real... Two years ago, CAA Offensive Rookie of the Year. Rookie of the Year. Uh, did it all. C carried the ball well. Was a great return guy. Great out of the backfield. And that is what he can do. He's extreme. Of all the backs, he's the most versatile. He can do he can do a little bit of everything and do it really really well. Um, he's not been healthy, and and watching him play not healthy was not fun. Seriously, not fun for him, not fun for the offensive line that blocked for him, and not fun for the coaches. Uh, has had a great off season. The one that started off well in January, and has increasingly gotten better, and he's building towards camp. Kobe Young behind him and had a great, great offseason. And, and he got some experience last he did, year. He played very injuries. well. Played very well. Um, Adrian Platt won't play this year. He'll be red-shirted. He's got a foot injury that's going to preclude him from playing. And we picked up a guy in the offseason named Yidi Thinrat, who we actually recruited, but he got hurt his senior year. And no one could trust that the, the, the severity of his injury would have kept him from being good in college. Uh, he went and played a little bit somewhere else, and he's completely and utterly healthy. And we are all three guys are different and all three guys are going to help us. All three are going to play. Now, they can't do their job unless the guys up front are doing their job, much like on the defensive side. An offensive line, to many, the most important position in all of football. <laughs> You've got experience there. We really do. You know, Antonio Harris had a great career and graduated, and Andrew Garnett has been primed to fill his shoes, and we got him some experience last year when we could. But the rest of these guys return. And they're all playing together. You know, last year, the first game of the year, we played Morgan. It's the first time those five guys ever played in a game together. And now they've played numerous games together. And it's kind of fun to watch. You, you know offensive linemen are good when they get it. They get it when they're, they don't finish sentences. They just kind of point and grunt and giggle, and they get it. And that's, that's a sign of experience and confidence. Wide receiver, last year you talked about the depth. We saw the depth because you had like 97 different guys catch a pass. <laughs> You've got that depth back again this year. Yeah, they all, basically they all return, except they're all a year smarter, a year faster, and a year stronger. And they, they like guys who talk about uh, one wide I got hurt this week, one guy had an ankle, and he's going to be out for a couple of days. And I'm like, all right, don't worry, I got it, next man up. And offensively, we have not missed a beat because of it. 
So we're deep and experienced. And the hard part's gonna be finding the right guy to put out there because they all know what they're doing. All right, we touched on every position but one. Mm. You'll have to come back later this week for the next edition of the Tiger Football Report when Coach Ambrose and I talk about the Morgan State Bears and the quarterback. For head coach Rob Ambrose, I'm Spiro Marikas. Please tune in later this week for our next edition of the Tiger Football Report. And as always, go Tigers.